Hi, I'm Steve Fleisch, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every uh, episode, we highlight uh, a nonprofit in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County doing wonderful work. And we are delighted uh, this episode to have Watsonville Wetlands Watch with us. And from Watsonville Wetlands Watch, we have Yesenia Jimenez, who is uh, the Watershed Education and Restoration Specialist. Welcome, Yesenia. And we have Stephanie Rios, who is the Education Programs Coordinator. So great to have you here. And, and I mentioned uh, it, it, well, we're discussing it, that uh, this is kind of uh, in line with a lot of the programming that we've had recently on Nonprofit Spotlight, where we've had Save Our Shores and O'Neill Sea Odyssey and Coastal Watershed Council, all, and now yourselves, all advocates for the, local, the regional ecosystem and kind of the Monterey Bay uh, Sanctuary. So we're really delighted to, to have you here and welcome. Stephanie, why don't you start us off and just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to work with the Watsonville Wetlands Watch. Thank you, Steve. My name is Stephanie Rios, uh, born in Los Angeles, but raised in the Central Valley, California. I came out to the Central Coast in 2008 to attend CSU Monterey Bay. I studied environmental science, technology, and policy. And I worked with nonprofits throughout college um, mm. to the return of the natives. And in 2014, I moved to work for the City of Watsonville Public Works Department. Oh, really? and so I got to learn a little bit about Watsonville and worked out of the Nature Center at Ramsey Park. And that's how I learned about Watsonville Wetlands Watch and all the great work that they were doing. And so I joined the team for here at Watsonville Wetlands Watch in 2016 as an environmental educator. And I've been here ever since. That's great. And again, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, I love uh, uh, Watsonville and the community that they are so community oriented that I wish, although I'm a Santa Cruz resident, I wish I did more work down in Watsonville. So that's terrific. And uh, Yesenia Jimenez, uh, you are the Watsonville, uh, the, Wat the Watershed Education and Restoration Specialist. So tell our, our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you came to work with the Watsonville Wetlands Watch. Um, yeah, so I grew up here in Watsonville, uh, graduated from Watsonville High School, then went to UCSC. Um, I, after I graduated, kind of was lost a little bit and didn't know <laughs> what to do. <laughs> um, I ended up getting, oh, well, I interned with the Puma Project for a little bit while I was in school and then didn't know if I wanted to keep doing that sort of work. Um, I did an environmental education internship at um, like in Santa Cruz at the, um, my gosh, the name is escaping me right now, I think because of the interview, but um, yeah, I taught kids marine science and then I was like, well, this is kind of fun. Um, and then I got an internship at the Presidio where I did, um, where I did a little bit of everything. Like, so I was a volunteer coordinator. So I did forestry, um, environmental ed, uh, habitat restoration, gardens and composting, sustainability. Um, and yeah, and then I moved back home and uh, I volunteered at the nature center, oh. the city's nature center. And wow. then I asked if they had any volunteer opportunities and they asked if I needed uh, an internship. And I said, I was looking for a job and they said they were not hiring, but their partner Wetlands Watch was hiring. So wow. I saw the description and it was basically all the same stuff I did at my last internship. It was like forestry, waste reduction, um, and restoration. So I was like, awesome. Oh, and environmental ed. So um, I've been here since 2019. So it's just been like three years now. Yeah, it's wonderful. You are really a Watsonville a local. So uh, again, uh, again, welcome. And I do want to hear about uh, the Green Grizzlies program a, a little bit later as we go into kind of the restoration part of, uh, of the discussion. But Stephanie, uh, tell us a little bit about you're on the education side. So, and I, as I went through your, your uh, website, there are just so many of these uh, various educational programs you have, the Wetland Wonders Project here, Green Careers, all this. Tell us about some of the, uh, the education programs that Watsonville Wetlands Watch offers and, and how you work with the community on that. Absolutely. Uh, so we have two high school paid internships that are going on right now at Watsonville oh Wetlands Watch. We have the Climate Core Leadership Institute, 
which is getting students to become community leaders in climate action. Mm -hmm. These kids are amazing. And we also have our wetland stewards program. It's also a paid internship where we uh, take students from Pajaro Valley High School and teach elementary and middle school students in the after school programs. And that has been a longstanding education program, but the Climate Corps Leadership Institute program is fairly new and really exciting. We're doing great work. And uh, I'd say those are our two big programs that we got going on right now. Yeah. Well, that is exciting. Uh, as, I, as I say, I went through the website and looked at all these uh, wonderful work you have. And I wish I would have had time to really kind of immerse myself in to know more about these programs. I will mention that uh, stewardship is very close to my heart. I'm a sanctuary steward with Save Our Shores and, and so have gone through their programs and understand the importance of stewardship in terms of, you know, protecting our wetlands and advocating for them. So that's wonderful work. Yesenia, you know, you're on the restoration side. This is really fascinating work. Uh, tell us about the Green Grizzlies, uh, kind of when you want to, but, but describe kind of what you do in terms of uh, your restoration work with the Watts of the Wetlands Watch and kind of with the community. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm on both the education and restoration staff a oh. little bit. So Green, Green Grizzlies is more like the education side. Oh, it so is? Okay. That, yeah, so I do um, club meetings with the kids um, once a week. We haven't started up this year, but we are going to start um, next week or two weeks from now. And with the green grizzlies, we do waste reduction. So it's just trying to get composting um, to, to happen more at the school. So the cafeteria staff does it, but we're trying to get more of the students to do it on their own and to sort their waste properly. Um, and then for restoration, we rotate between different sites. So we obviously do trail maintenance. Um, just because, well, we need to maintain the trails. And then we have different sites we uh, work on depending on like what kind of funding we have at the time. Uh, right now we've been working at the Bryant Habert property. Uh, we just finished planting that with the help of um, the CCLI interns oh, really? and um, the fourth Saturday restoration like volunteer group. And so that's converting a, like it used to be a wetland like a really long time ago and then it got converted into an ag field and now because it floods too much, it's been taken out of production and now it's being turned back into like a uh, wetland habitat. So like a wet meadow and grassland area. Um, and then we have our shade tree and fruit tree programs. So for that, um, basically Wattsville residents can that live within the city limits can qualify for a free tree. And we're trying to do oh. shade trees in the front and fruit trees in the backyard. Um, and the reason we want the shade trees in the front yard is to just uh, shade the concrete. Um, so Watsonville has a pretty low tree canopy cover. A city of our size should have a 40% canopy cover, ideally 30% like at least. And uh, back in 2012, when we started looking at how much shade we have, we had about 7.8% of the there. ground. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's tremendous progress. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Although we were talking earlier about uh, the program in Nonprofit Spotlight is what we call Evergreen. So it'll be on our playlist uh, starting tomorrow, the next day uh, for a while, and then it'll play periodically throughout the year. So we don't normally talk about uh, things that are going to be happening kind of in the, in the future. It, it won't really get covered. But I really did want to know more about the fourth Saturday restoration event. H how does that work? It sounds very exciting. Yeah, so um, Which, basically, by the way, is coming up on the 24th of, of September, so people yeah. will know. Yeah, yeah, so the next one's the 24th of September. We just had one on um, August 26th, and we meet up at our office. Um, we're located at 500 Harkins Slough Road at the back of Pajaro Valley High School. So you drive like all the way up the driveway and park in the back, like near the basketball courts. Um, then we encourage people to carpool. Um, or sometimes we take the ed van and take people out there. Um, yeah, in the future, it's gonna be, uh, we're trying to integrate more of the wetland stewards in, um, oh, really? and so they can do a small like education piece. Um, and we just go out to different sites. So we rotate sometimes, um, like we just went to Brian Habert this month and the month before that we were at Struve. Um, and we just have people come out and weed and plant and they get to learn about the native plants. Um, and why we do the work that we're doing. 
Well, it sounds like a wonderful program. Now, now, is this something that's uh, uh, open to the general public? Is it just for Pajaro Valley students or for no, high it, school students? It could be anyone. We've we've had volunteers come from like two hours away, even. Oh, is that right? Uh, sometimes, yeah. There's this uh, dad that brings his kids, um, and uh, yeah. So sometimes it's we encourage the students to come, um, and there's. Families can come. You can bring little kids too if you want. Oh, um, yeah, anyone. It's one of the things that I enjoyed the most uh, about uh, being a sanctuary steward is, is having uh, kids, uh, school age kids, out. You know, and showing them, you know, what's important about the Monterey Bay uh, Marine Sanctuary. And of course, your work with the wetlands is so very, very uh, important. Um, uh, Stephanie, I wanted to ask you about. You mentioned briefly about uh, and it's something I was fascinated in of the Climate Corps Leadership Institute. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about that? That just sounds like such a fantastic program. Yeah, um, like I mentioned, it is a year long internship program and actually started in the summer this year. And they'll be working with Watsonville Wetlands Watch till the end of the school year. We open this program up to any high school student living in the city of Watsonville. So that's a big difference compared to our wetland stewards internship, which is only for Pajaro Valley students. So anyone who's in a high school within the city of Watsonville can apply to be an intern. We take 12 interns and they learn a lot of skill sets in urban forestry, restoration. They even did a couple of weeks of learning about fire management. Um, which is a big topic here in California and managing, mm -hmm. you know, fuel reduction in our wildfires, etc. Wow. And so these students get a lot of hands-on experience in restoration. They work closely with Yesenia and the restoration team planting the trees to meet our shade canopy goals. And it's uh, once a week, the students meet with um, education staff here on our team in Watsonville Wellness Watch. Mm -hmm. and it's it's just an amazing program and it keeps growing and the opportunities keep arising. We've even had students come back for a second year. So students that have done the program before can continue the program mm -hmm. and they get connected with other partnering organizations to do internships. So students that have gone through the CCLI program can uh, repeat and or reapply and do the program again and get connected with other orgs like the Bird School Project, which is a local nonprofit, or uh, we have a couple of second year interns working with Esperanza Farms, which is a local farm, and they're working on a really cool project bringing healthy salad options to students um, at Pajaro Valley High School and some of the local elementaries. It's just amazing uh, what the students can do, and it's all in the name of climate and climate action, climate stewardship. So it's oh, nothing, you know, nothing could be more important uh, today, any day, in fact, you know, than really being mindful of climate change and what's impacting our climate, and particularly, you know, making that uh, available to engage on younger people do you find that some of the people uh, are maybe interested in careers in uh, some kind of eco ecology related areas absolutely that's a really primary big goal for the program too and some of the um, students that have gone through the ccli program stay with our watsonville wetlands watch family we've hired interns to help uh, the restoration team so they'll continue watering those um, trees that they planted when they were in the program and also helping to restore along the trails, trail maintenance. They also uh, help out on the fourth Saturdays. Um, I see them working with the community still. So uh, we advocate for careers and we're also holding on to ones that want to stay local. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, paid internship opportunities. Yeah. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, this wonderful work that all nonprofits do, and particularly Watsonville uh, Wetlands Watch, uh, can't really be done in a financial vacuum. So people who are going to be watching this show, uh, if they would like to donate some money, uh, they can certainly go onto your website. Again, a wonderful website, watsonvillewetlandswatch.org. Uh, let me ask you if uh, members of the community, and you're talking a lot about uh, children in school and, and, and young adults, uh, the community at large, uh, can, can they go onto the website and volunteer for you know either a tour or working in restoration with you, Yesenia, or how do they get engaged with the work that you're doing? Um, 
So they can go on our on our website, wetlandswatch.org, to find out about our restoration events. Um, Stephanie maybe could talk a little bit more about uh, people who want to be docents. Oh. Um, and then for our um, our community forest work, uh, we have a separate website. So that's watsonvillecommunityforest.org. And that's where Watsonville residents can find out about um, our uh, fruit tree workshops. They're once a month, also on fourth Saturdays mm -hmm. at 2 p.m. So you could uh, come out to a restoration day in the morning and then later in the afternoon, wow. uh, we rotate to different parks and mm -hmm. you could um, come get a free fruit tree. Um, and uh, what else? I think, yeah, we're looking for input also on how to manage our urban forest. Oh, really? So that'll be like on the homepage of our urban forestry website. Um, so that's just one way you could help is just give your input. Um, and, you know, we just want as much input as we can get. Yeah. Well, it's such a terrific opportunity for people in Watsonville. And I do love Watsonville for that reason that you, you're such an engaged community. You know, people that are you know, interested in the things that impact that community are really ready, willing, and able to kind of participate. And it's nice to have a filter like yourselves to be able to say, well, you can help in this way, help in that way. So um, now you were saying something about the docents. I would like to hear more about that. Uh, I had some friends who became state park docents and just great programs, you know, all around. So tell us about your docent program. Okay, so we are bamping up to reinvigorate our volunteer program getting out of this COVID lockdown situation. Oh my, yeah. Uh, yeah, we are looking to do monthly drop-in volunteer training opportunities. So we're not trying to limit people to only doing one kind of training that's offered in the year. So every month there's a opportunity for anyone who's interested in volunteering in any capacity, whether it's drop-in or maybe they wanna focus on um, restoration volunteer opportunities or education volunteer opportunities. We, we're happy to have you. And it'll be like a Friday training once a month, uh, kind of a drop-in situation. You can reach us uh, through our website if you're interested. And then from there, we can kind of tailor to what kind of opportunities you're looking for. If it's education, and if you'd like to become an education docent, there's an additional training just to get you familiar with our field trip sites, what kind of students we're working with, et cetera. But it, we're really excited to get help because uh, we got a lot of cool things going on. We're trying to work with more schools. And so we'd love to have folks come out and work with us. So now with uh, COVID thankfully easing just a bit uh, and people able to actually get out and do some things and you were actually able to talk to people and engage with them personally, uh, you've been able to pivot the organization a little bit you know, into more of a you know, community outreach and, and an engagement mode now? Yes, as safely as possible. We of are course, doing, yeah. <laughs> we are doing a uh, in-person events now um, and when we do work with students in the after school program we are able to safely have them uh, you know get on a bus go out on a field trip uh, regularly staff we wear our masks but it's optional for our docents and volunteer if mm -hmm. they would like to wear one yeah and Yesenia, um, I, you do so much wonderful work in restoration and you've got these programs going on. Uh, do you actually uh, take people uh, uh, on tours of the wetlands or you show them, you know, kind of what the what wetlands encompass, you know, in terms of the South County? Um, I, I know the city does some walks. Um, uh, their nature center is closed right now. So I think you would have to follow their Instagram page to really oh, right. uh, know and like stay updated. Um, we do offer like a tour. Um, I think it's like once a year when we do, we highlight like our different sites that we've been working on and we can like invite people. Um, I think that one already happened this year. Um, but usually it's just like on fourth Saturdays after we're done doing the work, the last like 10 minutes, um, I'll spend just doing like a walk along the trail a little bit and showing people plants. But I don't think we like tour all the wetlands. We do have a map at our office to show you what all the different yeah. trails are. Yeah. yeah. And you were saying, it's interesting that uh, so much progress is being made about you know, shade trees and things like that. Uh, have you seen in your time, you've been now since two, 
2019, you were saying, I think, yeah. with, with the program. Have you seen uh, uh, an improvement in uh, overall in, in the conditions of the wetlands in the South County? Um, I think, yeah, it's kind of fun to see, um, like, for example, like the project along Strusslu was being done in sections, depending on like how much funding we were getting. And so um, I think it it's just been interesting to see throughout the years, like something we planted for World Wetlands Day, like three years ago, how big it's gotten um, along certain trails. Like it, there's patches that used to be all weeds and now you have some diversity. I think the funnest one for me to see was, um, like two years ago along Struve, uh, like right before COVID, uh, we had planted some milkweed. And then oh. the next year, uh, we didn't have any volunteers coming out. And then um, when we finally did have volunteers come out to Struve, I was able to show them like, oh, hey, or no, it wasn't volunteers. It was a wetland stewards field trip, mm -hmm. uh, which was also hard during COVID because they had to be walking field trips. There's no buses. So the kids had to walk to the, to the uh, slough. And then I was able to show them like under, the milkweed, there was uh, caterpillars for monarch butterflies. And I was like, yeah, see, like sense. the work we're doing is like really making a difference. And like, yeah, that's been fun. And you know, I did look, and excuse me for not being a, as informed as I, I might be, but I know that the Elkhorn Slough is such a, an integral part of, of Watsonville and the Watsonville community. Now, are, you, are you doing work in, in the slough itself? Uh, Elkhorn is separate, so that's um, that's that's different. Um, our there is this title, and um, so a long time ago there was a tidal gate put up uh, along the Pajaro River, so um, that keeps the tidal flow out of ours. So historically, the wetlands in Watsonville would have had more of a tidal influence, but now they're all freshwater, okay. and we're the lar the third largest freshwater system left in California. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, we have six different sloughs and. Um, I'm nervous again, so I don't know if I'm going to name all of them, but I know Stephanie teaches the names to all the kids, but <laughs> yeah, a corn separate okay. from us. And I know that, uh, you know, the, 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 the term restoration is, you know, is, is wanting to maintain and improve the, 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 the ability of our wetlands to contribute to the sustainability of our water supply because it, it's all a holistic system. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's been cool because uh, there's, there's just like other projects like for uh, for Struve and then for the Brian Haber property that I mentioned earlier, uh -huh. we're going to be, uh, for Brian Haber, they already were on phase two and we made new ponds and then for st uh, phase three, they're going to make new ponds. And then on Struve Slough, that's, I think that project got put off another year, but there's going to be more ponds going in there. So we're trying to create more areas for water to drain before it goes into the slough system and then the river so that the plants can filter and clean the water um, more. And like, that's especially important because we have a lot of like agricultural runoff from the one near Brian Haber and then the one near Struve that one's like right in the middle of the city so that has a lot of like urban runoff. It's interesting and, and you, you mentioned I'm just thinking about it now how much uh, the agriculture agribusiness there in Watsonville is related to climate change and, and how intimately involved they are. Uh, do you do much education Stephanie about uh, or, or to or through the agribusiness areas into kind of what is climate change and how to really steward that? That's a great question. <laughs> I know as far as my work with the students, we do touch on a lot of the agriculture. We really speak to it as that they're not the enemy. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Very good it. point, yeah. Yeah, so we, we do highlight some farms that, you know, have got it going on with, you know, making sure that it's organic and not spraying. And so luckily we've been partnering with the um, Land Trust of Santa Cruz County to allow students to go on field trips um, right across, it's really close to the high school there with through oh, our course, yeah. program, our Wetland Wonders Education Program. So students get to go onto the Land Trust property off of Lee Road. And that wetland restoration site is right next to a really nice organic farm. Oh and, my. And we do partner with the farmer to come and talk to the students. And, and we, it's just a great place to take kids to see how close a wetland and a farm can be, what are the impacts to it, and how can we work together as humans to come up with solutions to minimize the impacts. 
And it's a wonderful opportunity. And, and you do mention the human side of it, you know, how we're all involved in this, how we're all part of, you know, looking at climate change and looking at the ecosystem and looking at the condition of our wetlands. And, and it's wonderful work that you're doing. Uh, you have a terrific staff. I did again when I spent some time on your website. Great staff, uh, great board of directors. By the way, I do know a couple of folks on your board of directors. So I was very pleased to see that, you know, people are really engaged in this. Uh, we've got about uh, three or four minutes left. Uh, Stephanie, what's, uh, what's on your radar for the next uh, few months as we kind of ease ourselves out of COVID and back into an opportunity to really maybe do a little more connection personally with the community? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to um, working with our restoration folks to build our fourth Saturday events. I'd love to meet folks right in their backyards, oh so my. our yeah. city sites where we can have Fourth Saturday events happen. I'm looking forward to getting people out of their houses and come meeting us on the trails. So I'm really pushing for, you know, if you're interested in plants, animals, if you're, you know, parent, grandparent, or just a recent retiree, like we'd love to have your help in joining us and reaching out to the community. Uh, we are really lucky to have such a bilingual staff, one that represents the community, Wonderful. but we're looking for volunteers who can help. So we'll take college students, anyone who'd like to participate, like I said, join in on our monthly volunteer opportunities training and, uh, and we'll find something really fun for you to do. And they can connect uh, through the, your website for all of that? Absolutely. Yeah, Wonderful. You okay. Reach out to our volunteer coordinator. Mm -hmm. And Yesenia, we saved the last minute or so for you. Uh, what, what's on your radar and your horizon for the next uh, bit of time here as, as a restoration person? Um, I think we really want to uh, ramp up the, well, I mean, a lot of our planting happens in fall and winter. So mm -hmm. we're just going to get that going for different sites. Um, I think we're going to work on block seven, which is on the land trust property. So it's, it's really cool that um, fields that get taken out of production can then be restored. So more of that. And then um, the, for the urban forestry project, we want to start moving more into schools. So, so far we've planted 450 shade trees, but um, Watsonville also doesn't have that many parks. So uh, places to plant are limited. So now besides partnering with like uh, people to get trees at their homes, we're trying to get more trees in schools. Um, we're working right now on getting like um, a line of trees planted at Pajaro Middle School, which is not in Watsonville, but we are also excited to work with them because they also don't have that many trees um, and they have an ag field right behind them. So we kind of want to build like um, like a like a natural like fence Wonderful. of uh, shade trees and then add some fruit trees. Um, I, I'm just looking to get more trees out, basically. You're going to be busy. Uh, again, uh, Yesenia Jimenez, uh, Stephanie Rios, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for all the great work. It's so important, uh, the work that you're doing. And thank everybody at Watsonville Wetlands Watch for, for the great work they're doing. And uh, keep it up. And uh, thanks again for being here. I've been Steve Plage. Uh, thanks for tuning in for this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Tune in again next edition when we are interviewing some other folks doing great work, like our good friends at the Watsonville Wetlands Watch. See you later. Thank you.